Today we're talking about a ruthless, merciless hitman who got his start in Spider-Man's extensive rose gallery. He's a big man, he's Tombstone. Let's talk about him. First, thanks for watching JLS Comics. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I do upload videos just like this every week. Okay, let's jump into our story. Lonnie Thompson Lincoln, aka Tombstone, was created by Jerry Conway and Alex Saviak for a Marvel comic book called Web of Spider-Man. Born and raised in Harlem, he grew up troubled, not only for his family's struggles, but Lonnie was an albino African-American, and his peers in school would tease him and bully him just because he looked different. It's unclear if this was a birth defect or the result of an accident, but Lonnie's vocal cords were damaged as well, and so he could only speak in a whisper, further isolating him from his peers. And being victimized in this way started Lonnie down his path for a life of crime. Because he was being bullied, Lonnie decided to counter his appearance by lifting weights and working out. And once he was strong enough, one of the strongest and tallest kids in his class, he turned the tables and became a bully himself. Then, while bullying other kids, he started shaking them down for protection money like a little mobster. And it was here in school that he first got the name Tombstone. His classmates called him Tombstone due to his skin pigmentation, as well as it being a pun on his middle name, Thompson. He also came to be called the Horror of Harlem. One of his classmates, one of the very few who would befriend him, who wouldn't bully him, was another character from Spider-Man's cast named Robbie Robertson. Back in his high school days, Robbie worked for the student newspaper, and he planned to run a story about the extortion racket that Lonnie was running on their fellow classmates. But Lonnie was able to pressure Robbie into not publishing the hit piece. When Lonnie was just a little bit older, he took his criminality to a professional level, where he moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and became a lethal hitman for a mafia don named Ozzy Montana. In fact, he was so lethal that he began to fully embody the nickname Tombstone for the amount of bodies he took. And so the name carried from high school into his adult professional life. And he used his unique appearance to his advantage, both for intimidation, he even filed his teeth down to sharp points like a vampire, but also for misdirection. By this time, Robbie Robertson was working for a newspaper called the Philadelphia Inquirer. He had gotten a tip that a hitman named Tombstone murdered a Philly mob boss, which was Ozzy Montana. So one fateful night, Robbie went down to the docks on the waterfront to meet his CI. And he got there just in time to see Tombstone assassinating his informant. And again, Tombstone intimidated Robbie into keeping his secret. And it's a secret that Robbie would carry with him for two decades. It was during these early days of his criminal career that he met a lady and had a daughter with her that they named Janice. Janice became a villain in her own right when she grew up, a flying female known as the Beetle. Janice was in 2019's Spider-Man Far From Home, where she was played by an actor named Claire Rushbrook. Tombstone was then hanging out with Black Mariah, Stokes, who'd later become Cottonmouth, and a few others as they planned to form a new gang. Tombstone's big idea was that they would all file their teeth down sharp like he did and call themselves the Fang Gang. But Lonnie ended up calling Mariah fat, and so the gang broke up. Lonnie garnered the attention of Oswald Silkworth, a villain known as the Arranger, who was the right-hand man to Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. So Lonnie left Philadelphia and went back to New York City to work for the Arranger. His first assignment was to kidnap a mutant named Roland Raymond, who was also a Wall Street broker. And Roland was able to persuade people, and so his name was The Persuader. Through this working relationship, Tombstone became one of Kingpin's most fearsome, prolific, and successful hitmen. After over 20 years, Robbie Robertson saw that Lonnie was back in New York City, and so he finally mustered up enough courage to confront Lonnie over what he knew, and he had a videotape to support it. So Robbie set up a meeting with Lonnie at Battery Park in New York, where he attempted to shoot and detain Lonnie on citizen's arrest. But in the struggle, Tombstone beat Robbie and broke his back. And Tombstone took Robbie to death's doorstep, but held back as he remembered it was Robbie who was one of the few from his past that he considered a friend, and whatever twisted definition of that lay in his mind. Robbie kept his tape, and it wound up in the hands of a photographer he was working with at the Daily Bugle named Peter Parker. And still trying to get that tape full of damning evidence back, Tombstone went after the wife of Peter Parker, Mary Jane, and so Peter confronted Tombstone as Spider-Man, and they fought in Atlanta, Georgia, on a steel girder high above a construction site, and Spider-Man nearly lost the fight to Tombstone's strength, but Spidey was able to subdue the hitman and get him to confess, and so Tombstone was sent to jail. Robbie was charged and convicted as an accessory to murder because he'd withheld evidence for over 20 years, and so he was sent to prison on a three-year sentence. And when Tombstone learned of this, he used his contacts to arrange to be transferred and put in the same cell block that Robbie was remanded to. 
Robbie was stuck in there having to fight for his life against Tombstone. He was no doubt saved by befriending a big brute named Bruiser. Sadly, Tombstone beat Robbie's friend Bruiser to death. Tombstone then planned a prison break by luring Spider-Man to the prison using Robbie as bait. Tombstone had acquired a virus from Chameleon and he forced Robbie to inject it into Spider-Man's arm. Tombstone then beat and nearly killed Spidey again as he and Robbie escaped the prison compound in a helicopter. And at altitude, Tombstone was going to kick the unconscious Spider-Man out the door so he'd fall to his death. But Robbie dove at Tombstone and they both tumbled out of the chopper, falling into the Susquehanna River. And they happened to be near an Amish farm and Tombstone forced an Amish veterinarian named Aaron DeWeiss to heal Robbie at their farm. And when he was well enough, Robbie and Tombstone Tombstone fought, with Robbie stabbing Tombstone in the stomach with one of the Amish farmer's pitchforks. And it wasn't until a few issues later when Robbie would finally be pardoned. As Tombstone began linking up with Chameleon and Hammerhead, Tombstone wanted revenge against Robbie still, but Hammerhead said that he was wanted still, since he'd absconded, and so it was better if he had somebody else go after Robbie for him. So Hammerhead hired Hobgoblin for $25,000 to kill Robbie, and this angered Tombstone. So he later waited for Hobgoblin because Hobgoblin was going after Robbie and Tombstone shot Hobgoblin, grazing his head and this was just enough for Spider-Man and Puma to take out Hobgoblin which saved Robbie Robertson in the process. Tombstone though still had a grudge against Robbie so his next plot was to ambush the reporter at a chemical plant owned by Norman Osborn. Tombstone was there to force Molten Man to steal ingredients for cocaine and he also informed Robbie that this was going to be happening which set up the trap for him. Instead, Molten Man showed up with Spider-Man and Green Goblin and in the battle, Robbie ended up shooting Tombstone who fell into a vat of Diox-3, a plant preservative chemical and an ingredient for the drugs. And this didn't kill Tombstone, instead it enhanced his already formidable strength and gave him impenetrable skin and very acute reflex responses. It took him from fearsome and ruthless to supervillain. So now, angry at Hammerhead, Tombstone went back to Hammerhead and took over his entire gang. Spider-Man confronted Tombstone, noting that he was now cold as ice and hard as marble. Hammerhead then shot up the building and it exploded and Tombstone disappeared into the wind, but he wasn't dead. Later, the criminal network known as The Hand sponsored a deadly game forcing contestants to kill targets. It was a lethal assassination game. Tombstone wanted to win really badly, and as he confronted his opponent, which was Taskmaster, he bragged that he had 36 confirmed kills. As Tombstone and Taskmaster fought, he nearly choked Taskmaster to death. They ended up fighting on a bus with a dead driver, and the hand gave Tombstone his next target, City Commissioner Christine Harris. So Tombstone dressed up like a clown and took a poison pie that he was going to give to her at the circus, but Daredevil and Punisher showed up, threw the pie in Tombstone's face, and he was arrested again. His next plan, though, was to get back at the hand, and to do this, he wanted to steal a powerful amulet from a new hero in town named Darkhawk. And Tombstone almost killed Darkhawk, who was saved by Satan Johnny, although Tombstone did manage to steal Darkhawk's amulet. As he sought to access the amulet's power, Darkhawk showed up to reclaim the amulet. Then a Caribbean islander, a mercenary named Hardcore, hired Tombstone along with Kickback and Nitro to go to Chicago and kidnap Dakota North but they were foiled by Luke Cage and the Punisher. Tombstone then found himself in Las Vegas, where he came into contact with Nomad and Nomad's baby Bucky. After killing a few people, Nomad and Daredevil fought Tombstone. And in Nomad's book, when Kingpin and his criminal empire collapsed, Tombstone was one of the cabal of criminal elite to pick up the pieces and attempt to divide them up amongst themselves. So this meant Hydra, Yakuza, The Hand, Secret Empire, Justin Hammer, Red Skull, Tombstone. They all wanted some of the pie, but those negotiations quickly divided. Evolved. He did, however, manage to get a piece of the criminal pie for himself, which made him the target of another criminal named John DeZone, aka Dead Zone. It just so happens that Mark Spector was after Dead Zone himself. So Mark Spector ended up taking on a position as Tombstone's limo driver, using Tombstone as bait to get to Dead Zone. And it worked. And Mark, aka Moon Knight, was able to take out Dead Zone. Tombstone then tried to kill the unconscious Dead Zone, but Moon Knight stopped him from doing it. And when Dead Zone came to, Moon Knight and Dead Zone continued to fight while Tombstone took the distraction as an opportunity to escape. In yet another story, Tombstone took over power from Hammerhead. Tombstone then made Hammerhead's former right-hand man, Sandos, with his second-in-command. But then when Tombstone came right out of the East River with Spider-Man's mask, saying he was the one who killed the Web Slinger, Sandos was there, even as Spidey showed up to once again defeat Tombstone with the help from Black Cat. After Tombstone got out of jail again, he ran into a Spider-Man clone named Ben Riley, who was going by the name Scarlet Spider. 
After this, Tombstone sent two of his soldiers after Don Jirasi to assassinate him, and when they failed, Tombstone killed one of the soldiers, Jeff Feltz, and forced the second soldier, Steve Marlowe, to finish the Jirasi hit job. When he got back, they were attacked by Punisher and the Scarlet Spider, who'd been tracking Steve Marlowe. They had to blow up Tombstone's penthouse in order to escape, and Tombstone then took Marlowe's kids hostage to force him to kill the mayor. Their mother saved them as the building blew up and Tombstone once again nearly escaped a capture kill fate. When Don Jirasi, still alive, announced that the Punisher would be his successor, Tombstone was again pissed. So he recruited Jigsaw, Firefox, and Hachi Man to kidnap Jirasi's children and kill the Don himself. But the Punisher knocked him out with sleeping gas and tortured Tombstone until he gave up the location of the children. Later, with Don Fortunato stepping into the power vacuum left in the empty void that the Kingpin had left behind, General Coy called together Tombstone, Silvermate, Hammerhead, Slug, and other criminal leaders in a gambit to take on Fortunato and seize his power. In the attack, Tombstone was taken down by Spider-Man, and Fortunato then took Tombstone to his contacts at Hydra. They were going to shoot him, but he was rescued by Spider-Man and Daredevil. Now, after Tombstone got his hands on a new designer drug that could induce paralysis in high doses, he was defeated by Ben. Riley and Gambit. We next saw Tombstone at a nightclub for criminals when Moon Knight, Shang-Chi, Black Widow, Dagger, Daredevil, and Luke Cage as the Marvel Knights attacked. Tombstone fought back with a gun and a grenade launcher, nearly winning before Dagger sucked him into the Dark Force dimension. At another bar, Tombstone confronted Craven the Hunter's son, but stopped when the young Craven punched him right in the nuts. He was then in the process of robbing a bank when he had a heart attack. Unfortunately, the doctors were unable to treat Tombstone due to his impervious skin, and so they passed him on to the federal authorities, and the feds put Tombstone in a secure housing unit to monitor him. His roommate was another criminal named Spot. He got into a fight with Kangaroo, but had to recruit Rocket Racer and others to fight for him since his heart was so weakened. And after suffering another heart attack, Tombstone was transported for an attempt at surgery, which is when he escaped, and so Spot teleported him to Switzerland to get his heart surgery. In a quid pro quo moment, Spot asked Tombstone for help, but instead of helping him as a thank you, Tombstone broke Spot's neck. Later, he was again apprehended, and this time he was put in a supervillain, Supermax, called The Raft, and remained there incarcerated until a massive Massive prison breakout, which was caused by Electro, who was working for a scroll in the body of Electra. Now free again, Tombstone was recruited by Norman Osborn to be part of the newest iteration of the Sinister Six. This time the ranks were stacked, and the team was now the Sinister Twelve, and it took the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, Spider Man, and Black Cat teaming up to defeat the Sinister Twelve. And to work off the rest of his sentence, Tombstone worked a mission for S.H.I.E.L.D. with some other criminals to fight AIM agents and Null. Then Lily Luca hired Tombstone to pretend to kidnap her in Monaco as a trap to defeat Daredevil. But Daredevil was able to take out Tombstone and foil Lily Luca's plans. So Tombstone then started working as a bookie. He was working with the son of a rubber magnate named Conrad O'Shea. And when O'Shea got in too deep, he put out an ad for a hitman to take out the guy he owed the money to, Tombstone, who answered the call, Deadpool. It was right after this that Parker Robbins, aka The Hood, was setting up an underworld army, and so Tombstone joined The Hood's ranks. Then Tombstone went with Bushwhacker and The Hood to a meeting for a fight over who would take over the mantle of Scorpion while brandishing a stolen costume. This, just as Spider-Man, the female Scorpion, and Michelle showed up to stop them. Tombstone was then hired by Dr. Octopus. Harry Osborn's son was believed to have a goblin formula in his blood, and Otto, Doc Ock, wanted it, so he tasked Tombstone and another villain named Shocker with recovering it. The catch? The baby was still in Lily's womb. In the fight, she started to go into labor, but Doc Ock showed up to claim the newborn baby, and it turns out that Lily was also the goblin derivative villain Menace. And with Tombstone still tracking her, she used her goblin glider to knock Tombstone out. Next, Tombstone decided to get revenge on Deadpool for coming after him earlier, so he first had scientists develop a formula to negate Deadpool's healing factor. He also sent out a sniper to take out Deadpool. And meanwhile, other villains around town heard about this formula, including Kingpin and Bob, agent of Hydra, who also wanted to kill Deadpool. And this whole story ended with Tombstone's lab on fire and him pinned to a wall with a truck by Deadpool. At a Cirque du Nuit performance, Tombstone, Kingpin, and others were at the show when Gambit and Kate Bishop showed up to steal their money, and they wanted revenge for this theft. 
That's when Tombstone went to a meeting to plan how to get revenge on Clint and Kate, the Hawkeyes, for stealing their money. Next, Tombstone showed up at the bar with no name to meet a lady named Joelle as he wanted intel on Baron Strucker and Hydra. But then Gambit showed up and blew up the bar, and he quickly learned through Fence that Gambit and Joelle were trying to get a formula from Baron Strucker called Zero Compound, and Zero Compound could restore life. So again, Tombstone wanted revenge, and he sent mercenaries to kill Gambit and Joelle. And he got a hold of Strucker's Zero Compound, but in a fight with Gambit, Rogue, and Joelle, he lost the compound, and it ended up dissolving. In the next story, Tombstone learned that his daughter Janice was the supervillain Beetle, and that she was working with Boomerang, Speed Demon, and Overdrive as the superior foes of Spider-Man. After Secret Wars, Tombstone was still running with his mob in New York City. Now though, he had a magical necklace that he won from the hood with a gem in it called the Super Soul Stone. But Luke Cage and Iron Fist showed up to take the necklace back from him. So Tombstone ended up hiring Reaper and Grimm to go steal it back from Cage and Iron Fist. Black Mariah and Jenny Royce got a hold of the necklace and used it to rob from Tombstone. And then, when they combined, used their monstrous form to attack Tombstone himself. So Reaper and Grimm reached out to Luke Cage and Danny Rand with help defending Tombstone. That's when a gang war erupted between all of them, including Alex Wilder, Mr. Fish, and Black Talon in the mix. And later, Tombstone robbed from the Owl. He and Hammerhead also went to a charity banquet hosted by Kingpin for his wife Vanessa, but Fisk choked Tombstone out and told Lonnie to leave. Despite this, Kingpin's representative named Legal hired Tombstone to take out Daredevil as Murdoch was preparing a case against Kingpin. Tombstone attacked Matt Murdock and Jen Walters, She-Hulk, at a bar. And when he threw Matt out a window, Jen changed into She-Hulk, and he quickly left. Kingpin was mad, but Murdock won his case, so he was safe. He again showed up in a Deadpool book, now on a ship called Queen Kathleen, where Deadpool showed up and he was again robbed. In an event called Infinity Wars in 2018, a guy named Turk Barrett acquired the Mind Stone, one of the Infinity Stones, so he called Tombstone, Bullseye, Sandman, Spot, and Typhoid Mary to help protect them. And so he went to Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel, Rocket, Groot, Star-Lord, Adam Warlock, Iron Lad, and Black Widow to talk about what to do with the stones. Another hero showed up and an inevitable fight erupted where Drax hit Tombstone just before Requiem, aka Gamora, showed up. In Miles Morales' Spider-Man book, Tombstone had a truck full of kids, so Miles and Rhino showed up to save them and beat Tombstone. Once again in a Deadpool book, Deadpool and Jessica Jones showed up to beat Tombstone up and get information from him, and he told them to go find Doctor voodoo about Deadpool's missing heart. The Hood then invited Tombstone to take out Hawkeye for $3 million, still wanting that revenge from before, but Hawkeye showed up to take out the Hood before he and the other villains could do anything. And the last time we saw Tombstone was in Savage Avengers in November 2020, where he was once again at the bar with no name. And while Tombstone was yet to make a live-action appearance, he did appear in the 90s Spider-Man the Animated Series, Spectacular Spider-Man, and 2018's Into the Spider-Verse animated film, where he was voiced by Marvel Jones III, an actor notable for, among other things, being an albino himself. That's Tobias Whale in CW's Black Lightning series, by the way. Tombstone's also a boss in the hit PS4 Spider-Man game. So where will he show up next? Who knows? Until then, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.